Hi everyone, it is Fitz with your Power Talk after Monday's press conference. I gotta tell you something. Going to a game, driving back on Sunday at 7 p.m. and then having to do some more work and then go to a Monday press conference about the next game is a little jarring. Uh, this, this season is rolling forward. The cats are halfway done and it is flying. I am telling you, this season is absolutely going by. We're only a third into the Big 12 schedule, and that's what really matters as the Cats come off their victory at Colorado on Saturday. And the news out of the press conference today was no big news, which is good news because there were a number of K-State injuries towards the end of that game. Uh, Colorado fans they were all think they were all being faked, which is kind of comical to me uh, because you don't have your best cornerbacks all lay on the field so they can come out of the game because they're injured on a key drive. That's not how you fake injuries, let alone Marquis Siegel, a team captain, being taken off the field. Uh, but Jacob Parrish didn't return. K-State's top corner didn't return because he was faking it. But he's apparently okay. While Chris Kleiman didn't mention anyone by name, it looks like they'll be ready. They'll have a better evaluation. But honestly, the same turnaround that the media was doing for this game at West Virginia, coming out of Colorado, the team is too. So when Chris Kleiman is telling us this, he's only heard from his doctors and trainers. They haven't even seen their own players yet because they had Monday off for the most part, and then they were coming in for practice. This is so weird to have these turnarounds, but Kansas State apparently came out of Colorado reasonably okay. He didn't say they're all going to play. He didn't even come close to that, but he said it's better than what they thought on some of those players. And I asked one of those players, we got him at the table, uh, and maybe it was the most uplifting answer of the day for K-State fans when I started the Avery Johnson session with, how's your body? And he said, good. And that was it, because that said it all. Uh, he's feeling good. And he, he did get dinged up pretty good in the game. Uh, now look, there's some things here that happened at Colorado that I don't think some fans really grasp. Yeah, Casey got away from the run later in the game because Colorado was basically forcing them to throw. They were loading up the box, playing man on the edge and saying, you know what? Your receivers can't beat us. Your running back can. And not only that, trying to take away DJ Giddens, the hip injury that Avery had suffered earlier in the game, took him off the table as a running threat. Now, they didn't want the defense to know that, but he could not run the ball, so they had to throw the ball. And that pledge, that belief that your receivers can't beat our corners cost Colorado the game at the end of the day. In fact, that same pattern that Avery Johnson and Jace Brown connected with had been run a few plays earlier with just a slight overthrow from Avery, who apparently took a little off the, off the pass the second time around, and Jace had to kind of slow down, use his body, wedge it between him and uh, the defender where the ball was going to end up. This kid's a true sophomore. That's an advanced receiver move. Uh, it's called stacking him up, and it, it was incredible to watch him do that. It was it, it just kind of showed the future of this program. Those are two true sophomores. They played as true freshmen, and now they are a really good quarterback receiver duo. I asked Avery about uh, being that tight with him and how it translates to the field. And Avery admitted, yeah, they've spent a lot of time together throwing the ball. And yes, it's made them uh, kind of communicate without being able to say words. And that's really an amazing relationship. We see it with all the great, you know, quarterback receiver, quarterback tight end relationships that they just, they're on the same page. They get each other. So K-State's fairly healthy, heading to West Virginia. We think they're healthy. And uh, this is part of the jarring turnaround now. You come off the road. They actually got back from Boulder later than they did from Provo, right? Because you had to go so far from Boulder to get to the airport after the game, which is on the far eastern side of Denver. They got home from Boulder, a much shorter flight, like 30 minutes later. Five in the morning, they're pulling up to the football building. It, the, and now they're back on the practice field today and tomorrow, getting ready for West Virginia, who's now in the Eastern time zone. K-State Central, Colorado Mountain, West Virginia Eastern. 
Welcome to the Big 12. The new Big 12 is going to mean a lot of travel and only the toughest teams will survive because every place is a challenge and now the turnaround between games is also a challenge. The grizzly bear never complains about the cold. He just knows it's part of life and takes care of business and eats you.